Hello, welcome back to the OTB channel um, for another little ramble. Um, for those who haven't watched one of my rambles before, uh, these are a sort of unstructured uh, video where I'm just having a general chat about um, the things that have cropped up in my mind over the course of the last four or five weeks and uh, I talk about the channel and uh, where I'm going to go with it. So, um, we've hit the six month plus mark. By Christmas, we will have hit almost seven months with the OTB channel. And looking at it overall, given that I started it as a hobby simply because I wanted to see how to produce YouTube uh, videos, uh, I've just clocked over 1,800 subs. Um, some of the videos that I've produced seem to get loads of views. The deep in video last week is romping away. Um, and some, like this, I suspect, my rambles will only get two or 300 views over the course of a few weeks. I'm not too bothered about that. I quite like the mix of content that I'm producing at the moment. And primarily, I'm still doing these videos because these are the things that interest me. I'm not running it as a business. Um, it's a hobby. And... Uh, Six plus months in, um, I have to say I thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, it's allowed me to keep on top of what's happening in the Linux world um, and to learn the use of uh, some new software, particularly OBS and KDEN Live and other video editing software, and uh, to actually feed my interest about hardware. Um, that's probably the thing that's changed the most since I've been running this channel. So I thought I'd take some time out and uh, make a little video about how I make my YouTube videos and what's changed over the six or seven months that I've been doing this and where I'm at at the moment. So with that said, uh, let's start by looking at the hardware and the kit uh, that other mast. So you should see in front of you uh, a photograph of my current setup. Um, you'll have to excuse the mess. Um, for those who've watched this channel for a while, you know that the the core of my kit is a little Intel Nook uh, PC, which uh, has been absolutely amazing. It's coped with everything I've thrown it. Uh, i5 processor in it, 16 uh, gig of RAM, and it romps home every week. I really can't see that I'm ever going to need anything more than that. Um, but I'm squashed into uh, what estate agents would laughingly call a third bedroom. It's a, a little box room. You'd struggle to get a bed in here, and I've got a table and all my kit squashed into it. There really isn't a great deal of room. I am uh, I have plans. I've got a, a cabin being built in the back garden at the moment, which should hopefully be ready in January, and I shall relocate. Because as you can see, uh, there's not a lot of room. I've even, I have noticed in this photograph, got, got one of my speakers falling off the edge and uh, leaning uh, against the wall on the right-hand side. Um, but there's my kit in a nutshell. So I've got the LED lighting, uh, which seems to work okay. Um, I've got my new camera. I've got an XLR microphone. And I've got a little mixer and uh, a Focusrite Scarlet Solo, um, which is is doing the trick. Uh, let's have a talk about those individual components. So let's start uh, by talking about the camera, which is my uh, latest purchase. Uh, I didn't actually buy it on Amazon, although you can see the Amazon page here. Uh, I bought it on eBay from one of these uh, new but unboxed, new but never used uh, sales, so I paid slightly less. Um, you don't need something like this for uh, a YouTube channel. You really don't. Uh, I started off with the Logitech uh, C920. I uh, upgraded that to move to the Razer Kayo. I don't know if that's how you pronounce it, but the Razer Kayo webcam. 
and uh, I just wanted to uh, see if I could improve the video on my channel anymore. So this is what I treated myself to. Um, I was looking at DSLRs to start off with, and uh, most of them were out of my price range, or the ones that looked like they did uh, everything I needed. So I took some advice from uh, some friends who are into uh, photography, and they suggested that a small mirrorless camera would probably be about the best, uh, on the basis that they can pick up low light situations quite well, but I needed something that would produce a clean HDMI output. Um, and after doing quite a lot of uh, research, this uh, Sony Alpha 5100 kept coming up again and again. Um, and of course, it's got interchangeable lenses. I'm very much at the early stages with this. I, I've had it about a week. Um, I've only played with it at a very basic level. I've got it running on uh, the automatic mode at the moment, and I've changed the ISO settings a, a little bit. Um, but I wouldn't pretend I know what I'm doing with it fully. At the end of this week, I break up for Christmas, and I'm going to dig into the uh, guts of it to see just what I can do. There was something that um, came up when I was reading about this camera. Um, it has a tendency to overheat when shooting video. It turns out, though, that that's only if you're actually recording video on the camera itself. I'm not doing that. I have it linked up directly to uh, a CamLink cap capture card, um, and I'm recording on the computer. So there is no recording on the camera itself. I have a, a small um, power unit, so it runs off the mains, so I'm not reliant on the battery. And I have to say that I've run this for hours at a time, and I've seen no sign of overheating whatsoever. So as a camera that will replace a webcam, it's ideal. As a vlogging camera on the go, I believe the overheating problem can cause issues. But nevertheless, it seems fine for what I'm doing. Um, do I need it? No, not at all. But I wanted it. I wanted to explore in a little bit more detail. Uh, and I suppose scratch an itch. And that's part of what building this channel has been about, really. Um, I'm a hobbyist. And it's about developing my knowledge and developing the hobby. And so far... This thing seems to be doing the trick. Um, as I say, I've got it set up pretty much on automatic mode at the moment, but I am going to do a little bit more research. What else have I done? Um, again, I started with uh, your uh, Yeti, uh, the Yeti microphone, the USB microphone, the Blue Yeti, and uh, that was brilliant. But, again, doing some research, I read around and uh, um, everybody seemed to be recommending XLR mics uh, rather than USB mics. So I thought, well, let's give one a try. And uh, I bought myself the Audio-Technica AT2020. Uh, again, a condenser microphone, not a dynamic microphone. And initially, when I set this up, it came as something of a shock, really. I did prefer the quality of the sound and the way it sounded to the Blue Yeti. But what I was actually stunned about was, unlike the Blue Yeti, I have to be quite close to this uh, microphone uh, to get decent levels of volume out of it. I used to have the Blue Yeti hung up over here, and it could pick up everything without a problem. Not so with this thing. You need to be quite close to it. I was under the impression that that was something that really only affected dynamic microphones, where you had to come straight onto them. But, uh, yeah, I found that the volume out of this really wasn't what I wanted. So it needs quite a lot of gain. Uh, yes, you can increase the gain when you're post-processing in the likes of KDEN Live, but... I really wanted something that um, 
would produce sufficient volume on its own. And being plugged into my Focus Scarlet um, uh, audio interface, the solo version, I was finding I had to whack the gain up pretty much 100% to get a decent volume out of it. Um, it's not quite 100% at 100% because if I put it up all the way, the, the noise, it became quite noisy, the mic, and uh, it wasn't such a nice sound. So I thought, right, how can I improve this? There is a logic to what I've done. <laughs> Just bear with me. So this was the next little purchase. I decided to buy myself a little mixer. So I could play about with EQ settings and have a little bit more flexibility in case I, I wanted to add additional sound sources. I bought this secondhand on eBay and uh, although the preamp on the Focusrite is meant to be superb, I found that the preamp on this gave me a little bit more headroom and I wasn't having to turn the gain up quite so far in order to get the same volume. So essentially what I have is I have the XLR mic plugged direct into this, uh, and then I have a lead going out of uh, the main output straight into the focus right. I have the gain turned down all the way on the focus right, and I'm using the phantom power on the mixer uh, to power the microphone. My understanding of how mixers work is rudimentary to say the least. Gain, I believe, is the signal from the microphone as it comes in, how far that is amplified. And I also have, um, if I can put my mouse here, level buttons on this mixer, which are more to do with the traditional volume. Once you've raised the gain, you can increase the output even more. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm still coughing. I've, I've not got rid of this virus yet. And I found that with uh, the gain to around 90% and just a little bit of uh, an increase on the level on this Mackie. Oops, it's gone. Never mind. There we go. That I seem to be getting a louder sound, but without the noise. Nevertheless, I have to say that it's been quite disappointing in a way that I'm having to drive this microphone so hard in terms of gain to get it to be what I would consider to be, you know, a reasonable, reasonable level of sound with gain up so high. In fact, I haven't done this yet, but I'm looking at such things as uh, the Fet Head Phantom, which is a, a little inline preamp uh, specifically for condenser microphones, which claim to give you an extra 18 dB of clean gain so that you get your gain on this uh, extra, uh, I don't know what you'd call it, an amplifier, and you don't have to add so much gain at the mixer. Just what's running through my mind at the moment. I don't know whether or not I'm going to do it. In fact, over Christmas, I'm going to treat myself to uh, a little new piece of hardware. And one of the things that may be in the mix is I may well look at uh, going the dynamic uh, mic route and uh, buying something similar to uh, the Rode pod mic, maybe? I don't know. I may have to have something like a fet head or a cloud lifter for dynamic microphones to lift the gain a little bit more. Um, haven't quite decided on that as yet. But uh, that's essentially what I've got at the moment. The Sony A5100 is my camera. I have the Audio Technic uh, AT2020 as my mic, and it's plugged into a mixer, and uh, it seems to be doing the job. So that's the hardware I'm using at the moment. Uh, for anyone starting out on YouTube, none of it is uh, what I would describe as exactly necessary. Um, but it's been an interest. Uh, I found it fascinating, and I'm, I'm going to continue to tweak my hardware, no doubt, uh, simply because I'm interested in doing it. I'm not so sure that given the money it's cost, 
that I've seen the huge leaps in quality um, from what I've done so far. And I suspect that what I probably need to do in the future, more than anything, is focus on uh, lighting, um, which I'm going to have a look at seriously over Christmas. But that's essentially my hardware as is. But what about the software? Well, let's have a look at that. Well, <laughs> as you can see, I use OBS Studio as my main recording software. I've uh, just downloaded Simple Screen Recorder so that you can get a view of this. Um, really simple to use. Um, I have a number of different scenes set up here on the left. The cam screen. This is my HD screen there. I have a split there which looks at a small uh, camera picture plus a web browser. And then I have a separate one here which has nothing on it at the moment. But if I wanted to display a particular uh, image, I would put it there. Um, the background to OBS, well, essentially, I've just created a, a plain colored background in the GIMP and uh, a plain footer. And I've added my logo onto the footer. And I simply add a bit of text every week, depending on what the name of the video is. Uh, I've found it to be incredibly simple to use and very reliable. Um, in terms of the settings, what do I use? Let's have a quick look. Um, on the recording side, I tend to record in MKV format, which seems to give me the best quality. Uh, although when I um, put it into KDEN Live, I ultimately produce an MP4 video for uploading. I'm using the VA API uh, encoder, and I'm outputting everything at 1920 by 1080. Um, I've had to mess around a little bit with uh, getting the audio and the video synced. Um, I've had to do an offset of about 150 milliseconds so that the audio and video is in sync. I'm not saying it's perfect, but it seems to be more or less there now. So OBS Studio, absolutely essential. I still can't believe that this thing is free. It just works. I don't tend to do a video in its entirety as just one clip. I tend to produce multiple clips, and then I uh, piece them together in uh, video editing software. And uh, I've gone back and forwards between various programs since doing that. Uh, let me show you where I'm at now. Now, as far as uh, video editing is concerned, uh, you should see what I'm currently using on your screen now. And uh, some of you may find it to be a surprise that it's actually KDEN Live. I've swapped and changed quite a lot. Uh, I've tried Olive. I'm really impressed with that, but it's still very much at an alpha. Uh, I tried Shotcut, which I do like. Uh, it will also do hardware encoding. But I found that the quality, uh, especially in regards to sound, can be a little bit hit and miss. Probably something I'm doing. Um, but nevertheless, uh, it, it's tended not to be the one that I've used all the time. The video editing software I've probably used more than anything is OpenShot, which I found to be really consistent. The problem is it tends to produce quite a large file and it takes longer to encode than any of the other programs. So for the last couple of months, I've been using KDEN Live. Uh, you can see that on the screen there, and uh, you can see I've got the dark theme um, applied to it, which gives it a nicer look. I didn't like the light theme at all. It didn't look right on my Mate desktop. And um, I've got quite quick with this. For those of you who have uh, used video uh, editing software before, it's pretty much a, a drag-and-drop operation, so I can pick my introduction that I have up here in the project bin and just drag it down here um, and then I can play, etc. Um, 
I would then add one of the clips. For instance, uh, number one MKV is actually the uh, introduction to this video. And I would simply drag it to the start. Or, more likely, um, perhaps do a little bit of a, an, all, an edit to start off with. So I'd take it before the uh, audio actually started. I'd hit uh, Shift and R. Just click on that bit there before the audio starts. And uh, remove that. Once it's edited, I'd drag it up to the start line. A couple of you will have seen also that uh, I've started to add one of these little subscribe now buttons, uh, which I've got here, and I would drag that also into this. Um, that one, you can see it on the screen over here. The thing that I do to start off with is I resize this, so I will right click on that particular video. Um, and I will insert an effect. You can't actually see the menu because it's coming onto the other screen. But I'll select transform and then just basically mess about with it until it's in the sort of size that I want. Something like that. And continue. You'll also see that the sound clip I have... Uh, on my intro at the very beginning is a little bit too loud compared to the rest of the video so I will tend to also insert an effect on this and uh, just reduce the gain by about minus five to bring it down a little bit when I decide to render the video I hit render I usually ask for more options I choose the mp4 uh, option and I tend to record at around 20 and just hit render to file. This part is probably the process that takes longer than anything else. So OBS Studio and KDEN Live is what I'm using at the moment. So I thought some of you might find that interesting. Uh, so I've swapped and changed a little bit with software and... Uh, I've certainly done a little bit of investing in my hardware, um, scratching an itch all the way, and uh, I've thoroughly enjoyed it so far. And I'm glad I've taken uh, a few of you along the road with me. Um, in terms of that, um, I've started to actually have a look at uh, YouTube's analytics page uh, to see how they think I'm doing. So let me just uh, switch to the split mode. To show you how that works so here you should see on your screen uh, my analytics so far 1831 subscribers I'm pretty stunned I've got that many people watching this uh, but all good and if I go to the analytics page um, you can see there I post a video every Saturday and my views go up every single Saturday which is great the thing that I'm finding the most uh, interesting is my audience. Um, apparently, it's 97.5% men. I suppose being a, a Linux channel, I shouldn't necessarily um, <laughs> be surprised at that. Uh, but nevertheless, you know, I've got 2.5% uh, ladies watching it as well. In terms of age, YouTube now asks you to set whether or not your video is targeted for children. And uh, mine definitely isn't. Uh, and you can see I've got absolutely no one between 13 to 17 years old. Um, in fact, the majority of my watchers seem to be 25 to 34 years old. Okay. Um, I suppose that's, that's more or less to be expected. And in terms of the countries, 16% of my viewers come from the states with 7.1 percent from the uk i'm not quite sure how to use this data yet but if i'm i'm starting to dig into it a little bit now i've made a few comments about uh, monetization uh, over the past six months and uh, i made a decision not to monetize um at the moment um simply because i didn't think it was worth it 
but I've had a little of a bit of an experiment over the last week. As you know, there's been lots said about uh, changes to YouTube's terms and conditions, which are about to come in. I think it's the 10th of December, and they reserve the right to delete channels that are not commercially viable. I don't believe for one minute that that means that they're going to delete any channel that isn't monetized or isn't making enough money. But I started thinking, well, I wonder if I did monetize part of this channel, um, what difference it would actually make. And I thought you might find this interesting. Uh, I applied for uh, an AdSense account and it took a little while, but I got approved. And for the last week, I... I uh, monetized um about six videos on my channel the historical ones and um it's earned me apparently an estimated revenue of one pound 36 somehow i don't think i'm going to be retiring soon on that <laughs> um, interestingly enough uh the one video that seems to have made most of the money is the video I did some time ago, which is uh, installing Office 365 on Linux. Um, so I, I, I'm not so sure what that says. I suppose uh, when I do something that appeals to Windows users as well as Linux users, perhaps that's the thing that uh, will create the most views. In fact, that Office 365 video is far and away my most popular video so far. Um so I'm not going to be monetizing every video that comes out on this channel. Um, I'm probably going to be quite selective. Um, and if a video seems to get lots of high hits, I'll probably give it a week or so. Um, and then I'll monetize it if it looks like it's worth it. But uh, I really, when I first produce a new video, I don't want my subscribers having to suffer those uh, dreadful ads right at the beginning. So... Uh, Hey, this might turn into a little bit of a pension supplement in five or six years, so uh, we'll see how that works. Um, oh, my dashboard. Where are we on my dashboard? You can see monetization off, 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 off for the majority of things, and it's probably going to stay that way. 1,831 subs. Um, I got the initial bump up to 1,000, really, with Derek from uh, DistroTube giving me a shout out um because i was on 46 before that but i've scrambled my way up another 831 since then um youtube's uh algorithms don't really help new subscribers it, it it's a hard old road and uh with 1831 now it'd be nice to think that i'll uh crawl up to 2000 uh in january maybe um Although in, in YouTube terms, that, that's very, very small. And maybe, maybe, maybe to 3,000 by the end of next year. We'll see. Um, but I thought you just might find that interesting. So um, just a little bit of a, a chat about how it's been going, what I'm using, uh, where the channel is. Um I'm probably going to continue to do the once a week videos. There might be a little bit of uh, additional content over the Christmas period when I'm off. Um, but once a week seems comfortable at the moment for me as I'm working all week. Um, the content will vary depending upon what comes into my head. I may even start to do the odd generic uh, video that may not be Linux sp uh, specific. Um, I don't know. We shall see. But uh, just my thoughts and uh, another ramble. Hope you enjoyed it and uh, have a great week, everyone. And I'll see you next week.